Hello everyone, welcome to Minecraft Super Builds. My You're all Yuki. alone. Yeah, uh, yes I am. Yep, I'm Will. My computer's dead. Um, Will dumped a bucket of water on his computer earlier today because he's an idiot. It Yesterday, was like two I mean... days. Will? Will? Come back to me, Will. Will? 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 Hi. You've returned! Yep. My internet, I guess, is being stupid, which is weird, because this internet is usually really great. So, Will today is joining me via Skype and screen share, which I think you lost. I did lose screen share, I was about to tell you. Okay. Um, That's the second time we've lost connection, though, in a very short period, so... So, <laughs> bear with us. Bad episode. No, it'll, it'll be a great episode, I promise. Yeah? I um, promise. Yeah. I'm going to try to get something figured out for computer-wise. Yeah. Um, so, let us get everything set back up the way we need it to be, and then we'll be starting with the first map. Okay, guys, here's our first map. It is called Schoolhouse with Bell, and it is by Coffin Dodger. That's real. Uh, no, I can't see for sure, but it looks like he used hay, hay bales as the gate. Yes. That's really cool, actually. <laughs> Good idea. Now, I've already taken a little bit of a look around here, um, as I always do. And, yeah. from what I saw, this place actually looks really nice. Yeah, it seems like he paid a lot of attention to details and used things in ways you wouldn't really expect. Yeah. Like, I noticed over there the window shutters. Yeah. Being trapped so, doors. Yeah, well done. Okay, so okay. you walk in. Here's the entrance. Great attention to detail. Okay. Um, so there's one classroom. However, it's class 2B. I don't really understand well, that. Not to be? You're such an idiot. <laughs> Well, wait, wasn't there a room on the other side of the hallway? That's not we're, we're getting to that. We're getting to that. Calm well, down. Well, it's not to be. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, this this is a math class, not a literature class. How, there, There's no writing on the board. It does not say math. You know what? I will put math right there on the board right now. Okay. Wow. Anyways, um, I I I'm not oh I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm okay with the use of Arcadia wood. Arcadia? Yeah, Arcadia because it's like all orange and stuff. So. However, I love the desks. The desks are really nice. Yeah, the orange is kind of a weird choice. I would have probably gone gone with oak. I'm. I honestly probably would have done birch. Yeah, that would work too. It would have gone better with the uh, bookshelves. Yeah. So, going to the other room, that's the office. Which is not to be. Shut up. <laughs> okay, so, office, principal's chair, more Arcadia wood, and now we're going up to the bell tower. You climb up here. So this is like one of those really old classrooms where, like, all the grades were in one class. Yeah, really old schoolhouse building thing. Uh, when you get up here, got some nice carpet um, and a little sitting area. I don't know what this would actually be used for, but if I look up, you will see how pretty this is. Yeah, I don't think that'd be the greatest spot to sit if a bell was going off. True, but I really like the use of stained glass here, the black and white. It does look really cool. 
Especially since everything is um made from like sandstone related things. Yeah. I, I, I just really like that as a touch. Um, the co- overall yes. color use is pretty good, except of course the uh, acacia. So here's the bell. Yeah. I like the bell. Um, I don't really understand this little bit. That's the hinge. So then shouldn't the bell be a lot bigger? Probably, yes. I I feel like this is supposed to be the hinge up here. The uh, mossy... Um, what is it called? Mossy cobblestone wall. Yeah. I but, don't know. But what I love is the use of the mossy cobblestone wall... As the like little thing that's inside of the bell that hits the side. I can't remember what that's called, but yeah. The hammer. That's it. Yeah. I think that's a really nice touch. It is. I agree. So overall, I am going to give this build a rating of... Uh, I'm going to go with a 7. I'm going with 8. Um, anyway. I'm... I'm going with a 7 because I think it's really, really nice. Um, it is very well put together. It's a very beautiful build. Um, now then, the creator, um, Coffin Dodger, has other builds that go along with this. There's a total of three builds that all like link together uh, to build like a tiny town. I That's love, cool. I love the, like the basketball um court right here however there's no goals and goals are really easy to make uh just using what you call things hoppers yeah 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 that is i gave it an eight because i love the attention to detail like the crosswalk yes except shouldn't the black actually be like the color of the road technically but you don't know this person. Anyway, yeah, I just love the attention to detail on this. And while I don't agree with, like, the Acacia, overall, it's really well made and done overall very well. Yeah, I really like it. Me too. Okay, this is your vote one. And we will see you guys on the next map. Okay guys, here we are on the second map. This one is called Elemental Arrows, and it is by yours truly. Uh, boo. You're a jerk. Okay, I know. this is a uh, redstone setup, command blocks, all that, that I actually had seen um, a few people do uh, examples Stop of. Me. Yes, but I can't really remember his. I mostly based it off of someone else's, honestly. Um, if I remember right, his was, uh, like, he had different items in each slot, and they did different, like, magic attack things. Oh, okay, that, uh, no, no, it's not. I don't, I mean, I guess the selected slot thing, maybe... Okay, anyways, no, the, I saw someone, he made something relative to this, however, he used block data, changing the block data and stuff, which was honestly a little bit of a better system, however, this is much more on the go. Um, so how this works, I will show you one section of this. Uh, sadly, Will can't even see anymore because now I'm talking to him on his phone through a Google Plus Hangout. So, um, I, we were talking on my phone before. Well, true. Yes, but my phone apparently hates Skype and does not have an app for Google Plus Hangouts. Kids, it does have Google Plus apps. Kids, listen. Don't have water near your computer. I'm sorry, I spent so much time around my computer that it's kind of hard to avoid having water near it and not dying of dehydration. Then go outside and have a life. No, that's, that sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> okay, so how this works. 
you have this first clock. It's just a simple comparator clock uh, because it's as fast as this really needs it to be. Honestly, a slower clock might even work just fine. Um, but what it does, it will send a test to all of these command blocks um, going up and down here. Um, and what these do is they test for the selected item slot. Zero being um, the far left all the way going through all the way up to, I think it's nine. Eight. I don't know. So what that will then do is start another clock. Uh, which is a little bit slower because there's a repeater in it, um, but once again, it's fine. And that will test for an arrow in the ground. This is where a little bit of a problem comes in where you don't have the owner of the arrow, which I've been trying to get that to work. However, it doesn't really seem to like me. Uh, maybe when 1.8 finally is out, it'll work. We will see. Yeah. I find it odd that it doesn't mark the arrow as yours. It really maybe it should. just marks I... as maybe it just marks it as a player's because I know like you can use arrows you know, get X XP. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. But anyway, so we got um this testing for an arrow that is actually in the ground. Um so if it Actually, what are... Oh, yeah. So if it hits a mob or a player, of course it won't work. Because, sadly, there is no in-mob slot or, like, an in-player, in-entity type thing. Um, so, yeah, it has to be you in the could, ground. You could do a timed one. True, so but... if... Yeah. Anyways. Uh. So, then we have this comparator that will... If this is true, it will activate this, where this first one will teleport the player to the arrow. Um, this is using the at E for the type arrow because at E is at entity, um, which is a really nice thing in the snapshots and will be in 1.8. And now this next one on top of it will kill any arrows in the world. So, if I go ahead and grab the teleportation arrow, fire it over here, I will get teleported to it. And I have set up a few things for me to show you guys some stuff. I'm assuming it's at least somewhat laggy. Um, no. Actually, uh, since it's just a couple simple clocks, it's really not laggy at all. Oh, my God. I can't wait to see the video. So, first off, boom block. Well, technically second off. Right now, um, I'm firing at the Lapis Lazuli blocks, um, doing good amounts of damage because the explosion radius is set to 4. Um, what's the blast resistance on Lapis Lazuli? I'm not sure. It's at the very least decent. This next one is the Light Torch. So if it's nighttime, which I just got rid of, but you can fire an arrow and it will set a torch at the arrow. Now, here is a perfect example of why you can only do one arrow at a time, sadly. Let's say I shoot an arrow straight up and then one at a wall. That one will place, and here in a second you will see a... There it is. A torch will just rain down from the sky. Because it will become an arrow... I mean, it'll become, it'll, the arrow will, be, will become a torch and it'll drop. Um, now then, setting a block, if I fire this at the wall... I completely miss the wall somehow. It'll become a falling sand. Now then, why I have it set to sand? Um, you could set it to anything. However, sand was just nice because uh, it can fall on things. Um, not too much damage, but still. Um, this can be used for, let's say you got a torch. And then you fire a sand at it. The torch is now gone. By the way, uh, Lapis has a blast resistance of 15, which is the same as redstone ore, a hopper, iron ore, wooden doors, wooden planks, etc. Next off, we got fire. Now then, I had to adjust the fire a little bit so that it would only affect air blocks. So if I fire it right here, you'll see the, uh, 
the leaves are not replaced. However, now this tree is massively on fire. Uh, this can yeah, also be a little bit of a problem because if you shoot up the side, you will get um, the logs that it hits on fire, um, but like you're not going to get a massive 3x3 three three square of fire. And it, that's a lot of fun. But let's say you didn't want all this fire, so you fire some water, and you can put it all out. And that's basically it. Um, now then, this is very open. If you know how to run command blocks, you can easily uh, customize these to what you want. If you just follow this pattern, you can make more so you can have your entire um, inventory set up to do a bunch of different commands. And it's a lot of fun, really. Sadly, Will uh -huh. can't really see this. Uh, and I honestly don't think I should give it a rating. Um, but first, I will mention a few issues. One, doesn't work with two people. Sadly, for right now, this system only works for a um, single player. It's great for an adventure map, though. Um, and even a single arrow at a time. Yeah. Uh, you can kind of use some of them multiple arrows at a time. Like, if I do this, fire a couple of the sand arrows... They will all become sand. Uh, you can change that easily by setting a specifier of C equals 1, I think it is, which is just going to be the youngest arrow. Um, you can do that with the creepers. Which Wait, is if, you did, what? if you did the youngest arrow, that, and doesn't it get rid of the arrow once it places the thing? You can also have it get rid of the youngest arrow. Yeah, and then something else would then become the youngest, so... But then the command would have already done. Yes, but couldn't you have it cycling through so you could fire, like, two or three arrows? Oh, okay. The youngest yes, yes. arrow would disappear. Yes. yes, that should work. I haven't fully played around with it. This is basically just a beta test, guys. Um... And if you are going to use this, make sure, uh, first off, try your best to align it with a chunk. Second off, put it near your world spawn at the very least so that these command blocks will constantly be running. Because um, if this all stops, then your arrows are just going to be arrows. From what I hear, it sounds like it's probably like an 8 or a 9, but I'll have to see the video. Um, so it does have some issues, but this is really just a test of some of the new commands and stuff, the using execute, um, and the at E specifier, and I had yeah. a lot of fun building it. Um, yeah, so, so if, you're cur if you're curious about my rating, be sure to check the comments shortly after this video is up. And while you're there, you should leave a comment. With a vote? <laughs> yes. Speaking of votes... Guess how many oh, we got for the last one? None. Yep. <laughs> About one wins. Oh, well. Um, so this will be your vote, too. Uh, I, I, I'll give it a rating. I rate this an 11. Yeah. For, for, my, for my modesty. Yes, because <laughs> clearly the command block issues aren't aren't worth noting at all of in the rating. Not. So that'll be the episode for today. Any last words? Um, I'm disappointed because I lost a file that I could have had completed by next week that I was going to submit. Oh well. Yeah. Better luck next time. There's if I can find a way to get the stuff off my hard drive then I might have a build for next week. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. My name has been Yuki. And I've been Will. And we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.